Hello everybody, Tegan here with High Point. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of What is in the Night Sky this month. Tonight, I'm gonna be taking you through a beautiful tour of the night sky in the month of April. We're going to be visiting several deep sky objects and then we're gonna bring it closer to home and see what the moon and the planets are up to this month. So, as always, let's buckle in and see what's really out there. So April is when the spring weather starts to finally show its head, and spring is known as galaxy season. So naturally, the first target on our tour tonight is, in fact, a beautiful galaxy, Messier 51. Messier 51 is the Whirlpool Galaxy and is one of the most popular targets for visual observers and astrophotographers alike. It's conveniently located about three and a half degrees from al -Qaid, the star at the end of the handle of the Big Dipper. It forms a triangle with another star, 24 Canum Venaticorum. However, as with most galaxies, you'll need dark skies and a telescope to get the most out of it. Through a small scope, the galaxy appears as a faint patch with some texture potentially being visible. Larger telescopes, 10 inches in aperture or more, are needed to clearly show its famous spiral arms. M51 is a bright, feature-rich galaxy, as mentioned, for astrophotographers and visual astronomers alike. When the first image of the Whirlpool Galaxy pops up on the back of your DSLR screen or your phone or your computer, it is a sight that you likely won't ever forget especially as a beginner astrophotographer. So we're gonna move from the Whirlpool Galaxy, bring it back home, we're gonna see what the moon and the planets are up to this month. Neptune is too close to the sun to be visible, and Uranus is too low in the evening twilight to make observations worthwhile. However, Jupiter remains telescopically observable for a short time after twilight for the first half of the month. A crescent moon is close by on the 2nd and the 30th. Mars is just four degrees from Pollux in the constellation of Gemini, giving the observers an opportunity to compare their colors. You'll find them high in the southwest after sunset, with the first quarter moon just above Mars on the 5th. Venus is low in the east at around 30 minutes before sunrise at the start of the month. It will become visible from around an hour before sunrise by month's end. Mercury and Saturn also appear close to one another to the lower right of Venus about 30 minutes before sunrise from the 7th to the 14th. This trio will be joined by a waning crescent moon on the 24th and the 25th. So we are going to remain in the solar system for the next stop on our tour, but it's not a object, but rather a phenomenon. It's the Lyrid meteor shower. The Lyrids reach their maximum on the evening of the 21st, but they're best seen in the early hours of the 22nd. Fortunately, the moon is a waning crescent this year, and its light will not brighten the sky, allowing you to see up to 18 shooting stars every hour under ideal conditions. Now this is something that I mention quite frequently when discussing meteor showers, as this question is frequently asked, is what kind of telescope do I need to view the meteor showers, or what kind of gear do I need? Honestly, the best thing that you could ask for is dark skies. You likely won't see any shooting stars through a telescope or binoculars. Simply use your naked eye in dark skies to enjoy the phenomenon. So now we're going to travel way out past our solar system into the constellation of Ursa Major, specifically the asterism, the Big Dipper. Take a look at two stars, Mizar and Alcor. Mizar and Alcor are one of the best double stars in the night sky to view, especially if you are a beginner. This is an outstanding double star for beginners. Look carefully with the naked eye at Mizar, the middle star in the handle of the Big Dipper, and you'll see a tiny star beside it. This is Alcor, and while the pair makes a pretty sight for binoculars, Almost any telescope will show Mizar itself to be a double star. Seeing them side by side in an eyepiece is really incredible and it's, this is one that I highly recommend that you take a look at through a telescope. So the next stop on our tour, we're going to be traveling out past our own galaxy, millions of light years distant, and we're going to take a look at the Leo triplet. The two brightest galaxies in this trio, Messier 65 and Messier 66, are bright enough to be spotted with binoculars, but you will need a scope to see NGC 3628, otherwise known as Sarah's Galaxy. A magnification of around 70 times will show you all three as elongated patches within the same field of view, but you'll likely need a scope of 10 inches or more in diameter to see any detail. 
If you invest enough exposure time under dark skies, you can even pick up the tidal tail of stars, which extends millions of light years outwards from the galaxy itself. So the last stop on our tour is yet again another double star, so we're going to bring it back within our own galaxy, and we're going to bring it to the same constellation, Ursa Major, that we discussed before. The star is called Cor Coroli. Like the Whirlpool Galaxy, Cor Coroli is located close to Alcaid in the Big Dipper, and like Mizar, it's a relatively easy double for beginners. A low magnification of around 30 times will show a brilliant white star with a fainter, creamy white companion. All right, so that is our tour for the month of April. We thank you so much for tuning in, and if you have any questions, let us know in the comments. And also, if you've photographed or viewed any of the objects that we've discussed on our tour, let us know down in the comments as well. What kind of telescopes, what kind of gear were you using? Were you able to photograph it under dark skies, light polluted skies? We love to hear from you guys. Be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any future What's in the Night Skies and astrophotography gear content. I'm Tegan with High Point. Thank you so much again and clear skies.